Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Keith Allen, and our first pro player analysis of Season 8 is on the boy wonder himself, Mongrel. We're also really excited to announce that we partnered with Mongrel to create the most advanced Fortnite guide ever. Now, all you have to do is register on ProGuys.com, and you can do it for free. To hype you up for the course, let's jump right into a creative 1v1. Mongrel has been playing against other pro players in creative. In this fight, he's against Fnatic Motor. We're going to watch this fight all the way through before we go back and analyze certain key points. Let's get started. You got Bucky. So this guy that's breaking all my shit. Seven kill win and I kill win. I thought we bro. How many rips did you have left? Like 50. <laughs> Wait, what? I said how many rips do you have left? You should use them all. Okay, I don't know. I, I, I got an extra one from a kill though. At one point fucking four people jumped into my box and I just got like two of them. Killed two of them. I don't even know what happened there. I'm dead. Oh my god, I fucked up double. And I fucked up three times. That was such an easy win. <laughs> Mongrel starts off spamming 90s, but right at this moment, you can see him tilt his camera for a second. He sees that motor is below him. From this point, Mongrel knows that all he has to do is triple 90 one more time to secure height. The ability to build that fast and still keep track of his surroundings is why Mongrel is a beast. Let's move on to the next important detail. Mongrel decides to shoot Motor down during his retake. However, since the fight has so many builds, Motor was able to connect to old builds. A lot of players would give up in Turtle, but look at what Mongrel does here. High ground players can't see when you're directly beneath them. Mongrel bought himself enough time to find a weak spot and broke Motor down. Although Mongrel doesn't retake high ground here, he at least gave himself a chance. And speaking of retakes, let's watch the key moment that sealed Mongrel the win. Mongrel fights for high ground with a bunch of cone wall ramp tunnels. After a bunch of tunnels, Motor makes two huge mistakes back to back. His random side jump and then turning his back to Mongrel. These two mistakes pretty much sealed the deal. That's why dealing damage is arguably more important than high ground. Let's jump ahead and break down how Mongrel was able to close out the fight. Mongrel edits down from high ground to play aggressively. Motor takes his chance to retake high ground and Mongrel responds with a new defensive technique. Oh my god, I fucked up double. To close out the fight, Mongrel spams retakes until Motor messes up. From here, Mongrel sprays him out and wins the fight. Creative fights might not be realistic, but they're a great place to learn new building techniques. Practice the special ramp tunnel, the vertical tunnel, and general build fight awareness in your own creative 1v1s. If something didn't make sense in this clip, 
then seriously go back and watch it again. Everything he did was useful. If you don't need to rewatch the clip, then let's move ahead and watch a five kill pop off. I want to focus on two things in this clip, his great chip shots and his tracking. Both of these things are extremely important. They are both really huge parts of build fighting. Mongrel wins high ground with the basic ramp floor wall and forces his opponent to cover up. The shot that Mongrel took here was a pre-aim shot. It wasn't a mistake. He was expecting an edit. He follows up by coning the floor, which is something you should always do. To end the fight, take a look at how Mongrel sways from side to side as he edits. If you go for an edit play, then never stand still. Let's jump forward and see how Mongrel handles being pushed by an entire squad. Mongrel starts with a long range cone, but lands a full damage pump instead. Most players would hide here and end up dying. You need to go for a retake instead. He hits a side jump and follows up with some Tfu classics. Although he fumbles the edit, he definitely had the right idea. Now, before we move on, let's talk about thirsting. I know it's the end thing to do, but there are some downsides. If Mongo had thirsted, then he'd lose high ground. Instead, he stays up top and lands a huge shot on another player. He follows up by counter building with floors and begins pressuring walls. Right as he pushes in, he gets shot down, but lucks out on a fall damage bug. Anyways, he's in the middle of the entire squad and again, most players would turtle and probably lose. He does the same thing and goes for the retake instead of turtling. Another thing I want to point out is that he's using the special ramp tunnel again. Mongrel sees a player under him and tracks him for an easy shot. His opponent is building way too slow and gets caught up by a jump peak. Again, Mongrel continues fighting instead of thirsting. Once he finds his next enemy, he actually makes a mistake by building a wall. His opponent could have phased through and fought back, so I would have liked to see an aggressive all-in instead. Regardless, he goes for the chase and lands another chip shot and follows up with a nice cone. Now he's clear for the retake. He also lands another chip shot and breaks shield. Let's listen to the game sound and see if you can track exactly where this player is. From this spot, where is his opponent? Let's find out. If you do the whole way through, then comment below. All right, well, let's get back to the clip. There are two things that I really want you to learn from this clip. The first is chip damage. Always go for it because it adds up and makes your opponent play scared. You can always go for chip damage in build fights, so keep trying. The second is tracking with sound. You can practice your tracking without pressure by watching streams and trying to predict where players will be. Just like I had you do on this clip. Let's watch another great solo squad wipe. Mongrel starts off with a stroke of luck because his enemies aren't shooting him down. So he has free high ground. Even though he sees two targets to his south, he turns to the left and picks off the isolated target. This is 100% the right play. If he had targeted the southern players, he would have run into a 2v1, but instead he goes for the easy pick. As another player rushes in, Mongrel builds stationary 90s to ensure that there's no weird phasing going on. He also cracks his shield with the chip shot and quickly follows up with the down edit for the kill. Editing down is less risky than jumping down because it's faster and less predictable. A lot of players tend to jump, and that's just not the way to do it. After the kill, Mongrel starts taunting his enemies. You probably shouldn't do this unless you're Mongrel. If he were against better players, then he'd be dead. What I do like is that he's challenging fights from low ground by predicting peaks. Once Mongrel has had enough, he goes back for high ground. I know I say this a lot, but look at how Mongrel is only building one to two tiles of high ground. He can hear everything, deal good damage, and even has the option to engage. High ground done right, Nets in the kill, and now there's only one player left. Let's see how he ends the fight. I'm not even kidding, man. It's so 
Um, there are two things that you should learn from this clip. The first lesson is target selection. A lot of you play duo in squads, so target selection matters a lot. Pick the targets that are out of position and ask your team to focus fire. The second lesson is again to go for chip damage. Chip damage always opens the door for aggressive plays. We've been watching a lot of solo squads, so let's end with the perfect 1v1 fight. There were a bunch of nice builds and edits in this clip, so let's break it down slowly. The first thing that we have to look at is his high ground retake. He placed a floor and cone on top of himself to stop his opponent from counter building. Then he edited both and made an easy push for high ground. People don't do this because it's really hard to edit while running. It takes a lot of practice, but it's totally worth it to learn. The next thing I want to point out is his long range cone. This should show you how easily cones snap into other builds. Cones might seem intimidating at first, but they aren't too hard with some practice. To close out the fight, Mongo counter builds and edits down, earning himself a nice chip shot. His last move is a quick ramp flip and ends the fight with a successful all in. Mongo is all about getting one counter build or one tile of high ground and then going in. A lot of players tend to hesitate, which gives your opponent time to make a counter play. It's a tough thing to ask, but try your best to fight this aggressively every single fight. If things go wrong, then don't worry, Mongo makes plenty of mistakes too. Keep trying it, you'll get it before you know it. That's a wrap for our first analysis video of season eight. If Mongo inspired you, then visit ProGuys.com to check out his course. You seriously do not want to miss it. Hey, it's your boy Keith Allen again, and if you want to connect with me, I would love to hear from you on my Instagram. A lot of you guys have been leaving comments, and it's really, really cool that you do so, so keep it up. If you guys got any questions or comments, let me know. And stay tuned for all our future videos.